Hello and welcome to the Red Feather Genealogy channel. So this time we're going to be going over DNA verification. This is the process by which you find out if your ancestor really was your ancestor through genetics. I'm going to start with an example from my tree, which you've probably seen several times in my videos by now. Uh, it was a little bit more difficult than it might seem initially because I wasn't sure who my mom's dad was. Uh, my grandpa, uh, like pretty much the rest of my tree, was a bit of a mystery. And then I found out who he was. But this became complicated because it turned out that my grandma was screwing around on my grandpa so often that uh, the true identity of my mom's dad was a bit up in the air. But as I didn't have any other solid leads, I went ahead and I put him in the tree with his ancestry in the hopes that it would eventually pan out genetically. At the time, this was a bit of a reach. Uh, the DNA wasn't quite there yet, but I had to hope, and fortunately, it all panned out. So, long story short, through ancestry DNA, eventually I found out that he was. And this right here is the kind of anticlimactic chart to prove it. I have a cousin who is uh, related to me not entirely distantly, but can only be related to me through the right grandpa. So boom, done and done, and it turned out that that entire quarter of the tree was legitimate, at least as far as he was concerned. Very happy ending there. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, with slightly more difficult examples. One of my ancestors, very distantly, is Miles Standish. He was one of the Mayflower passengers. So we're going to see if we can verify somebody like him from a long, long ways out. And uh, just to warn you, sometimes it's not actually entirely possible with genetics because of recombination. Check out that video to see what I mean by that. Anyway, distant ancestors require more recent ancestors for DNA verification. What you ideally want is a series of DNA matched people bridging the divide. I'm going to show you exactly what this means in reality and how it plays out. So going through ancestry DNA is the easiest way to do this, and the best example I have is me and cousin Charlie. Uh, we didn't even know each other a couple years ago. Uh, in fact, he was adopted, so we didn't know anybody that he was related to. Uh, and he turned out to be my first cousin once removed. Uh, his mom and my grandma were sisters. So that makes Charlie and I a very strong match. And what that means for my tree is that this quarter of the tree, these are our common ancestors, we have these people in common going all the way back. So it's a quarter of my tree, half of his. As for finding relatives to help with all of this, this is his... Uh, when you go through Ancestry and you go through their DNA and then you go through the individual profiles, this is what you get. You get to see the tree if they have one, which they usually don't. And you get to go through shared matches, other people that you have in common. This is a very short list of the people that we have in common, but the gist of it is that all of us have the same ancestry behind that quarter of my tree because they match through him. And here's a perfect example from my tree of a really great success story. So not as distant as Miles Standish, Joel and I have these people in common. And this goes pretty far back. This goes back before the American Revolution. So how do I figure out if Joel and I really do match these people, if it's all legit? Well, as I was saying, you want to try to bridge the gap. In this case, I actually was able to because this is Cheryl. Cheryl and Joel and I all match each other. In fact, on the same chromosome, the same segment of the same chromosome in the same lineage. Cheryl is a stronger match because we're more closely related, but that's pretty much the slam dunk that you need right there is to verify that the more distant people are in fact related through more recent people. It all lines up perfectly, but the example doesn't stop there. 
So here it comes Dawn. Dawn matches all of us, same segment, same stretch of the tree, and just to sweeten the deal, this is Sarah. So we've actually got boom, 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 all in a row, all a perfect match. But here's the real golden goose. There's cousin Charlie. And he matches right along the same stretch. It's worth noting that Charlie doesn't match us on the same segment of the same chromosome, but we all do match each other genetically and strongly, and so it's all slam dunk again. Recombination explains why some people get this bit and some people get that bit, but we're all exactly where we need to be. So hopefully this makes a lot more sense of the earlier graphic that you need to bridge the gap to the distant ancestors. You won't often get a really awesome just bang 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 situation like this, but sometimes you do and it's pretty awesome. Also, I'd like to mention that 23andMe has a similar situation. Here's Cousin Charlie again over there. And you go through to his profile and it gives you a list of relatives in common. And it explains right there, uh, do you have shared DNA with these people? And you do. So these people are also related to me and him through the same common ancestors. It's really just that simple. Uh, right now, Ancestry DNA is the only one that combines trees. The actual research that people have done with DNA, it links it up so that it'll spell out for you who's related to who and sometimes you find out that your grandpa really is your grandpa. So you just go through, have a close look at relatives, who matches who and where, you take notes, and you start to build up a DNA verified tree. And that's that for that. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and all that good stuff, and I'll be back soon with more videos.